All right, I started to look around a little bit, so I figured I'd start and record. Here I am. Uh, I posted the previous portion, so this is a continuation of my conversation on the non-random distribution of impact craters, and I was having the thought somewhere in there about... I wonder if something, so this 37.71, I don't think that is that, nor do I think that this one is bordered by that, so there's no distinct A boundary layer that happens to be <laughs> like Chicxulub, Chicxulub, uh, Nader Crater, Deccan Traps, they're all here. Shiva Crater, Bolt, Boltish Crater, Crater. To a point where it's like, okay, those participated in us seeing some sort of boundary. And so we could say that similar type of events created boundaries elsewhere. And maybe this, these two, coupled with the other one, the Papagay, Papagay, pa Papagay, Papagay. <laughs> this one all at the 35.7 would be suggestive that maybe we would see some something that we would have distinguished as a line let's see if i put boundary 35.7 ma just see that free freezing Shadronian. So it's like a. At that point, I'm just kind of cheating. Like the angles. I'm like, okay, there's got to be a boundary. I searched like four sub levels in. There's the boundary. <laughs> Although maybe it is like that, or it's not as it's not a substantial Chicxulub, Shiva crater, Nader crater. Those ones were associated with a major, a major upheaval on Earth. Or maybe maybe ones that we can see sim had simultaneity si simultaneity to them occurred rapid succession relative to one another in a chain reaction type of manner. Uh, maybe they would produce uh, first Antarctic permanent ice sheets. That's a little bit later. But that would also make sense because water takes time to freeze, whereas radioactive decay, all of this could have, who knows how fast this happened, because effectively we look at modern rates of decay and don't realize that the Earth underwent radioactive decay when it expanded. And so it itself radioactively decayed, causing it to appear as if all of this time passed. But w throughout the process, maybe it would make sense that del a delayed based on actually how long it took to freeze <laughs> would be a... Uh, I'm not sure why 37 if, if or the the 35.7 would be associated with the first Antarctic permanent ice sheets but maybe or it could be really delayed like all the way back from here or even further back that really was where like when the when the top blew when the earth severed from India between India and Africa down between Africa and Antarctica and around Antarctica in the top blue 
because it basically cut off Antarctica so that a single landmass was severed from the rest of the the single landmass. So it was like two systems. One was Antarctica, and the one was the rest of the Earth. Even though the rest of the Earth was littered with fractures through it, like between North America and Africa and Mediterranean Sea, even though it had those, there at no point in the other landmass was there a complete disconnect between the totality of the mass in the same way that Antarctica was fully severed and the top blue, just like Beetlejuice, which is not pronounced Beetlegeist, uh, and I said it many times. <laughs> I finally looked at it. I was like, it's Beetlegeist, right? Like, I I would prefer it to be Beetlejuice. That one, I can... It just feels better saying some reason, even though it's a little weird that, it's, that it is Beetlejuice. But it's Beetlejuice... Juice. <laughs> and it came from some Arabic name that was like... Albaljuza... <laughs> There was, the, there was no B. They added the B. It was like a Y. I don't know. Anyway, I don't remember the story. I'm not going to look it up. Something of that nature. But Beetlejuice, not Beetlebutt, guys. It's top blue. I'll bring it up real quick. Beetle, guys, top blue. <laughs> Yeah, this one. Let's let's make it bigger. Top. There it is. Also the title, but astronomers have concluded. Quite literally blew its top, which is what the Earth did when Antarctica severed from it. And so maybe uh this is tied to that, which is all the way back in like 150 is what I was talking about before I went into that pretty long side tangent where I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Luckily, I have this screen to refer back to. <clears throat> but then I looked at this. Let's see. Let's see what's up with this bio. So when it starts to be more bio stratigraphy um. <laughs> uh oh I hope I don't gotta fucking get out of here oh sh shoot link to full text I hope that works uh, <laughs> bye. Let's just see. Congratulations on your part. Oh, that's not even bad, relatively speaking. Ten dollars compared to well, the the average is probably thirty dollars. I'd say that I've seen until this one. This one kind of pulled it down, maybe into like the twenty twenty eight zone. <laughs> Maybe even lower is ten bucks. Okay, it doesn't actually this says thirty four point six also. So maybe that's not even a distinct ash. This let me actually read at least the abstract or whatever this is. Book chapter abstract. The stratigraphic section located in Nebraska, Ooh. fossil record boundary. Whew. I kind of saved biology for last because it seemed like the most difficult to account for. <laughs> okay, and to understand. Not just account for, but you like understand. So I'm, I was thinking before I start hitting record, the the JK boundary, 
maybe it will be a JK thing where I'm like, okay, maybe not these, uh, maybe these things aren't all geometrically formed and are in fact fossils, but I still hold to that therefore they then would be tied, like the, the fact that they exist in certain times in history would be tied to certain times in history when during the earth expansion process when certain like fractures were opened into the earth and so maybe there are layers in the earth where like subterranean uh, especially water-based life was able to be prolific and at different times and and things like plankton and such that then uh, only really could survive there, maybe even. And so that's why it's extinct, because it, it cannot survive out here. <laughs> as soon as it was released to the surface of the Earth, extinct. Because it's not really extinct, it's inside the Earth. But the, the stuff that got released died. Although, I do believe that dinosaurs coexisted with human beings. We, we coexisted. I also, I believe that basically what happened is we figured out how to live without food so much that even the creatures didn't need to eat one another. And so we, like, the, the lamb and the lion could lie together, but also the man and the dinosaur could hang out. <laughs> And then there's this, like, unfortunate, like, downfall, maybe, like, that co coincides with, uh, like, an actual sort, like, the, the sustenance that gate maybe ties into these pyramid types, all these things around the world that we don't know why they existed. Maybe they were, like, to feed us, but then the, they've stopped working because the earth expanded and they weren't able to reset up the system and so we're basically back to hunter gatherer figuring it out again and being like this is how it is this is just how it is not how it's how it is that's how life is we gotta eat like the, here's this so we gotta go to school we learn all about all the things that this is how it is not realizing that there's this other half that if we set up the grid we don't need to feed ourselves anymore we don't need to waste energy doing anything except for just hanging out and enjoying the reality not actually struggling in the same way struggling in like a i would say in an absorbing information and experiencing like the most uh high resolution experience possible would be like the struggle because, I mean, there's so much to reality. And once we allow ourselves, open that doorway where we can just study it as a collective peacefully and talk about it peacefully and enjoy it peacefully, kind of like looking at the sunrise and being like, damn, that is a sunrise. <laughs> or the mountains. Like, anyone who sees a beautiful picture of a, whatever it may be, they know. <laughs> Although, I guess that means other things about me. Fuck. <clears throat> what do you mean? That everyone ignores me. It's that they don't appreciate the full extent of my awesome. <laughs> Uh, or, or I'm just hideous I'm like the mountain fuck it's funny Mount Grenard kind of be my be my uh, wingman hey wingman where's images weird there's my wingman. Subwing man. <laughs> Whoa, what's that?
the mother. Why does this say the mother and then have a... This is some pro... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pardon me pardon me I don't mean to make make jokes of things make light of things that are fucking real serious right now I don't know what's going on what to make of it all <clears throat> except for maybe the hope that we can learn to shape shift and be okay with it <laughs> I, uh, that's Jimmy he's just being a cat today i know he won't stop being a cat he's he's enjoying it i know it's fucking annoying because he has to be a cheetah too and he's, his poops could be smaller you know dude i don't i i guess we're in, maybe we don't even poop then you know like poop is a side effect of uh and in, in, in like inefficient approach basically because it's kind of like the vegetables are alive too <laughs> You know, no matter what, it's alive. So, and unless maybe it's the ether, then maybe it's like the worst thing because it's consuming the the all invasive energy in some way, pervasive, all reaching in a way where maybe it causes an imbalance over time. And then maybe that's why they just the system is not eternal. And uh, simultaneously, people's like state of mind, viewpoint changed. Because like, that society that set up a grid would have been one initially and had came from a struggle so able to bring them together that they would be one but then that struggle would fade <laughs> and you know the little like irritants that weren't re we that the struggle made be become like obvious to be little next to the, like the real fucking things that matter that bring us together that that struggle really can cause because of the like pressure it puts on us all, compacting us together, squeezing us, and causing conglomeration and bonds and coalescence into single larger units. But like, I mean, if we release the pressure and just really enjoy and look at life and as a collective for a while, then at some point it probably just explodes because there's no more pressure. So it's just an outward growth, like a supernova. It's like we supernova as a society, basically. Knowing that we're supernovaing and knowing that it's gonna cause, in the end, we're gonna be like, fuck... You know, even though all that all that stuff that happened, even though all of this, it's, uh, yeah. Rage! <laughs> and back to square one. I mean, story starts again, but that's part of the beauty of it all. It's fucking, it's just beautiful. It's just, no, it's waves, so. Waves in the ocean, it's over and over. Relentless. Okay. So this is maybe interesting, but that's interesting specifically. Shadronian boundary. <laughs> What is this? North American faunal stage. You mean in the time frame of this? Maybe that too. It's possible that the, the springs 
things from below, kind of like a tornado. Pulls debris from down below. <laughs> Catches like some unwitting ammonites, maybe. I mean, I don't want to say that they don't, didn't exist. I, maybe that's my why it's the JK boundary, because it was destined to be that they... It was a JK. They did exist, and I'm, I'm just obnoxious to even suggest otherwise. Clearly, they existed. What the fuck? The evidence is so profoundly so. I don't know. I haven't concluded that yet, but I'm open to it still. <laughs> but so maybe that would suggest that there's, uh, like a release of some other things that were living that we then find the fossils of that are then relate to the time frame of the proximal and relate to proximally like radially in some manner the craters as well as time wise so like <clears throat> If this were to say, like, because this says North American funnel at stage, funnel stage, what is funnel? Same animals are found throughout the layer. Within the Eocene, Duchesnian, Duchesnian, North American stage, forty two to thirty eight. I wonder where North America, like this, I don't know. Maybe I can look up this Shadronian North American Fall Like if they tend to live more on the east coast of North America. That might be interesting. I don't... It might be impossible to find this. Whether or not they would have noticed if it were occurring. I'm not saying it is occurring. If it were to be occurring, whether or not they would have noticed and written about it at this point is a question. Diversity and faunal turnover of North American land mammals are calibrated against the magnetic polarity timescale for million-year intervals for the latest Eocene through late Oligocene. <laughs> A major gradual late Eocene decline in diversity caused mostly by an extended period of extinction of archaic forms seems to be related to the worldwide crisis known as the Terminal Eocene Event. Let's look at that. That might be more significant, and maybe... 34 million. Which would make sense if it was related to the craters that formed 35 million, 35.7, I believe. Because on this, this time is rapidly passing. So if 34 or 35.7, these happen and simultaneously they cause a, some sort of release from within the earth of... Uh, 
this. Although it would have to be that those things pretty much only, uh, they even link it to both of those craters. That's a good sign that we're on to something. <laughs> good sign that this is pertinent, whatever this is. This was a time of... Okay, 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 let's go. Extinction event. Grande Coupour. Transition between the end of the EOC and the beginning of... Uh, extinction event. Marks by uh -huh. Most of the affected organisms were marine or aquatic in nature. That's another. That's that's critical because it may be that the only released organisms by the Earth were of marine or aquatic in nature, and the ones that were not released, dinosaurs, were actually present on the surface of the earth with us while we lived in a utopia until it fell apart and then they literally did in fact start eating us as has been documented <laughs> by people on like either at the minimum by these dolls or whatever you want to call them, uh, sculptures, sculpt, sure, dinosaurs, Mexico, something like this, these things, these things I believe are legitimate, which is so cool because they're in this like tiny, kind of run down because they're not really acknowledged, for, they're, they're certainly written off. Society's written these off. They're like, someone did this, but it's 33,000, dude, buried small ceramic figurines. People are like, nah, someone just fucking did that. Like, I don't know, dude. Don't know. This is found in nineteen forty four. In nineteen forty four, someone was like, you know, I'm gonna make some fucking dinosaur dolls. <laughs> I mean, that, that seems to me like the closer we get to the present, the more likely someone is to do something of this nature and be able to. But, I mean, 1944, maybe, but it's starting to get a little more questionable. But there's so many of them, and there's so in Like, there are some of them that literally show the dinosaur biting a human being. And I think that it's... That's what happened, is they started to, like, need food. And they're like, I don't want to eat you, human, but I really am hungry. And next thing we know... We can we can't keep them under control anymore. We, because we did because we had such a, a perfect world for them to live in, that they could coexist with us, because we managed to make, the energy source where no one nothing's hungry. <laughs> That's my thoughts. But then that energy source kind of like failed, because she, things were falling apart. We were gonna, going to chaos and just not doing this just kind of not following a more reasonable path <laughs> just kind of reckless maybe that's a little a bit critical of me to suggest but i'm saying as a collective reckless not just as an individual reckless i mean the collect when the collective is reckless then it's like what are we gonna do some shit happens. The system falls apart. This, and suddenly dinosaurs are eating one another, and then suddenly fucking world's getting expanded and flooded, <laughs> and all this is happening that we're looking at, and here we are seeing marine or aquatic in nature. That, that totally makes sense. Time of major climatic change, especially cooling, which again relates to what we just saw with the B 
beginning of Antarctica's water freeze permafrost perma free permanent ice permanent frozenness uh, whatever the terminology is <laughs> I think it's permanent frozenness I'm pretty sure that's it <laughs> I'm fairly certain that's it not clearly caused by any single major impact or volcanic event extended volcanic activity is one plausible cause another speculation points to several large impacts near this time which scattered debris perhaps as far as europe new dating mind you we can reliably i would say Look at this seismic pull-up data underneath these craters and see the angle that they hit them. Like we like Nader Crater. Is that Nader Crater? No. Like Nader Crater. <laughs> they call it an artifact. I beg to differ. Truly beg to differ. <laughs> Please let me differ. <laughs> Can we talk about how I differ? <laughs> Crater artifact. If I Google this, we find a paper that says that the more you are indoctrinated, the more likely you are to agree and not misinterpret the data rather than see an obvious fucking seismic pull-up that exists and just acknowledge it to exist. And instead, the, the, the interpreters with wait, wait, wait. seismic attributes can also exacerbate otherwise subtle effects such as acquisition footprint and velocity pull up push down as well as small processing and velocity errors in seismic imaging so these are reasons we write off the data is what that was as a result the chance that an interpreter will suffer a pitfall is inversely proportional to his or her experience. This simply is not how science is. This is just how experience is if you're good at doing the task, which the task is to remove the artifact as an artifact. That's what you're good at. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's a true interpretation of the reality of the situation. It just means that it's like if someone started a job today, they would be not as good as someone who, the same person, years later doing the same task. I mean, it's... That's reasonable because they're doing a task which is interpreting the data through a lens that they've established very rigorously across time. It doesn't mean that the, the seismic pull-up is a truly artifact. I would say these things exist all over the place, have been written off all over the place. Oops, this is not Nader Crater. There it is. Have, exist have been written off all over the place no offense to the people doing it because that's what this, that's what the practice is that's the point those who are practiced at the practice don't make the mistake those who are not practiced at the practice see oh look at that oh look at that that makes sense therefore that is oh no 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 let me explain. You're not practiced at the practice. I mean, we could say the same thing. 
You guys aren't practice at the practice. This crater doesn't exist either. These are artifacts. What are you talking about? Let me explain. They're artifacts. They don't actually exist. That's all I got, so that's why I'm at the end of my explanation. Stop there. I know you guys can be like, well, we have actual explanations. <laughs> I mean, if you say so I'm just saying so like we could look at literally if we see them and if we suppose that they exist and that they are legitimately there because they're not impact craters from outer space they're emissions from the earth itself then therefore we could Get that as close to zero. It does, for some reason it doesn't let me. And then as close to 90. That's good enough. I leaned it a little in the direction that it's better off. So maybe I'll put it in the worse off direction. Oh, that's a little way worse off. <laughs> oh, that's a whole degree off. That's why. There we go. I mean, it's pretty close to 90 degrees across a full four kilometers, which I would say, I mean, even if it was, let's say it's, it came in at a nine, at a slightly off angle, like we would begin to see pretty rapidly more off center structures below if I mean at that point though this this doesn't happen though then they would say that doesn't happen because this is an artifact <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying is if they're all 90 degrees and we say maybe they do exist then that would suggest that they are emissions from the Earth, which explains why they're all 90 degrees, because they exit perpendicular. Which kind of makes sense, you know? So, let's get back here. Uh... Scattered debris, perhaps as far as Europe this one did new, new dating of this meteor strengthens its association with the extinction okay a leading model of climate cooling at this time predicts a decrease in atmospheric carbon dioxide I mean, if the top low, although, is that what would have happened then? I'm not sure why what I was, why what I'm saying would cause an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Closely linked with the Oxygen isotope excursion uh, because of the just changes of the earth led to a decrease in the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere. The great break. Major European turnover, mammalian fauna. Marks the end of the Pribonian and the arrival in Europe of Asian species. Of Asian species. You mean ones that got fucking swept across? <laughs> in floodwaters and deposited in places. Oh, look at them migrating. <laughs> uh, 
I don't I don't know the story, but who knows, you know, it might be it might match in some way that may make sense of it. Cause effectively that's what's happening is if we pull up the earth. Uh, I must have Earth somewhere already, right? I can't not have the Earth somewhere. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I posted a video. Okay, okay. I probably shouldn't have gone through tabs. I should have just opened a new one. <laughs> if my computer, the computer would have probably been better off. It'd be like, yeah, it's fine. As long as you don't remind me that I had all these other tabs open. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gestation period elephant. I saw an elephant birth on YouTube or Twitter. It's like, oh, I wonder how what the odds of that is that these people saw it seemingly out in the wild. Maybe it was actually a, a like preservation, I guess. Uh, crap. Maybe I'll just pretend that's not happening. <laughs> uh, maps. Will that work for me? It's literally working. What the fuck? That that other tab is gone. Okay, what was I doing? Not Nader Crater, not that. Nope. I, I forgot. Oh yeah, Asia. Yeah, yeah, I was showing. Yeah, so effectively the Earth ruptured here between North America and Africa. I believe it then... S Essentially, water w was caused to flow this way, as well as this way, I guess, and pushing mountains. So, like the uh, this crack came down through here and up through this way. Somehow, it I th I guess it went here and then this way. Like it bounced off some and went up this way and around, and pushed into here and pushed up the the mountains to basically create a wall this wall by having a wall here the water that came across that would have just came across all the way instead it flowed this way and out here and i guess it, across here maybe this wasn't even open yet across here down here and into causing the himalayas and then it came this way and across this way, but maybe it also came this way, like more this way, and this way maybe, generally across to a point where, like, a, like they're saying here, the arrival in Europe of Asian species, I don't know what the details are. But that's the thing, like, if this model is true, which, I mean, the evidence strongly... Um, at this point, the only way it's not true is if this is all staged and you guys all... At least some people are in on it. <laughs> <laughs> to a point where, like, it's me-focused, which seems kind of unreasonable. Seems more reasonable that this model is just the truth. The theory of everything leads to these things and being uncovered, and that this is probably gonna be an explanation for this this arrival. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Widespread as extinctions. Hello. Speciation. Uh, 
There's also the possibility that when systems decay, like the Earth, because the Earth is radioactively decaying, like the the whole Earth is radioactively decaying. And guess who's part of the whole Earth? We are. <laughs> and so are the animals. And maybe there is like a a rapid evolution process where like speciation occurs where enough activation energy maybe that's why we've never directly seen like a species change into another species because it requires sufficient activation energy and things are stable right now but in times of major upheaval maybe they destabilize and branch off into many variants and cause a, a decay into subtler systems that are not so large, chunky, but more small bits that are kind of different everywhere. I guess that's what's uh, part of it, huh? <laughs> Becoming more large, chunky. Some uh, accretion onto the craton of truth. Okay, okay. That's it. And small, isolated relic population. That was more widespread or more diverse in the past. That makes a lot of sense. That we would find like a species that we thought was wiped out. <laughs> With the earth expanded rapidly to a point where like the same animal that was alive in like there are people who lived through the entirety of this who w would appear as if like they're so let's say there's there's dinosaurs that die in like the Jurassic time and then we find a few relic species of something or whatever it may be that we find that that mostly died mostly died at a one one time when like the flood or the whatever caused like most of them to die but a few of them remained causing a relic population a, a population that was more widespread or more diverse in the past currently inhabited a restricted area whose range was far wider during a previous geologic epoch also that territory maybe totally changed to a point where they just weren't able to reoccupy a new new competition maybe that too although not sure what this is ex examples whoa extinct carnivorous marsupial was native native why is that an example oh why are they calling that extinct if it they got a picture of it <laughs> female too much like it's just recently became the last known live animal was captured we got it <gasps> reproduce <laughs> oh my god dear god why
And this is a more... This doesn't count. I'm, I'm looking more for freaking... What they were saying. The relic ones in this time frame. Not something that we... In 500 years ago or whatever. Whatever I was saying. Let's go back here. It was given its name by a Swiss paleontologist... I don't even know what that means. Hans George Stellen. To characterize the dramatic turnover of European mammalian fauna, which he placed at the Eocene Oligocene boundary, a comparable turnover in Asian fauna has since been called the Mongolian remodeling. Interesting. Since from, uh, distant horse relatives. Existed for twenty two million years. Or, or, how about this? Dying for 22 million years. Like, because the flood was occurring, the majority of, like, everyone died at their, when their region of the planet was getting swept over, and maybe these things mostly died then although that would mean that there's a sort of overlap between a lot of them dying basically simultaneously living basically simultaneously I mean that sounded pretty simultaneous 48 to 23 55 to 33 considering it's between basically between this event and that event. Like, if Chicxulub marks one thing. Forty to... In the Europe. And this is probably Europe-focused? Or Europe-North America-focused, where these craters are? Three faunas. Da -da. Wait, huh? Where's this boundary? Thirty four. Then why is this saying a pre fauna? Whoa. Even toad ungulates. Those look kinda cool. Extinct family of even toed ungulates endemic to Europe. Extinct mammals. Middle, lower, Eocene, Africa, and Europe. North America, Europe, and Asia. Where was this? Found in North America, Europe, and Asia. Arc 
Kanta. Family of extinct insectivores. Whoa. Insectivores, like something that only eats insects. Okay. From yeah. Which is what humans are about to be. Fucking the World Economic Forum gets its way. <laughs> Dear God, what the, what the fuck? Post Grande include rhinoceros. Number of any of the five odd toad on oh shit. Whoa. They went from even toad to odd toad. Decayed to out of balance. It's like an out imbalance, maybe. Although five seems balanced. <laughs> I don't know. We evolve and have six fingers, ten fingers, or <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man, you got ten fingers. Yeah, I, I'm enlightened. I grew ten fingers on both hands. That's what happened. I don't... I didn't ask for this either. I know it looks weird. <laughs> but isn't it way more even... Toad? <laughs> Do you even have shoes? I stopped. I figured that that would help give me surface area contact with the earth so I could channel energies that be a magician you know me a magic man slinging fireballs like fucking Goku man um, I'll be uh I'll be uh who's the street fighter guy right <laughs> right Ry Ryu Ryu can <laughs> Um, no, I don't have ten anythings. I guess ten toes and fingers, but not singular hands or feet. Okay. Three or two, da 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 da. Are the extinct family of pig like? 38 to 19. <sighs> There's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of shit going on, dudes. Oh my god, is it possible to account for all this? Oh my god, I mean, I figured it would have to. Because it's just so, the evidence, it's, it's hard to explain how persuasive my research is. I know, I'm biased. But, undoubtedly, the earth expanded thousands of years ago and flooded. <laughs> Physics, geology, those are... Those things are written in stone and in the cosmos. I mean, next to some some fossils within them. I mean, which one dictates the past? You know, it's is it these or is it the the cosmos and geology? I feel like those are more likely to tell the story, and not uh, not according to standard interpretation but according to like an a more paradigm shift interpretation where the theory of everything is involved then i mean it's almost undoubtedly so to to not have an explanation for this would be very surprising to a point where like Wait, it doesn't explain biology. It's got to. There's got to be expl explanations for this. There literally has to be. It's just, I don't know enough. There just has to be. 
I know too much about this other stuff to know that there there has to be. I don't know what it is. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, this is it's definitely venturing more into my novice zones the more biology it is, but it's nice that it is venturing into it enough to like touch upon it. Okay, so things uh I don't wanna go to In depth at this, looks like a lot of sh a lot of things went extinct at different times, suggestive of different of a of a slow and it's it's more suggestive of a slow and steady process than I would say geology is at this point. From my understanding of geology, it is not suggestive of a slow and steady process. From my understanding of physics, it is not suggestive of a slow and steady process. This stuff... I mean... I think of layers of strata being laid down. And, and like, not all over the place, but, like... One second. Okay, so
Oh fuck, I was muted.